zero. Welcome back into Coffee Talk. Time is 8.28. It's still, you know, cold. Sorry, I wish we could say that the sun's out and it's warming up, but um, that's not what I got to say for you. We're joined this morning by two ladies from the George Coon Public Library. We've got Nichelle Fawn and Kathy Svoboda. Did I even get close? (laughs) Good. Yay for me. (laughs) Good morning, ladies. So, y'all, there are so many things going on at the library all the time. I, I look up events going on in the area. And there's always something pops up from the library. Um, Talk to me a little bit about what's going on. Well, um, I'll just kind of tell you what we've got going on coming up this month in March. Um, We'll start with kids programs. Um, This Thursday, starting at 3.30, Ashley's going to have her Hot Cocoa Club. And this is like a book club for ages or first through fifth grade. And they just come in and usually discuss a book. Um and have hot cocoa so this week it'll be perfect for hot cocoa with this weather um then on march 19th she's going to be doing a maker space um, activity with the kids starting at 4 30 and that's a stem based activity so they usually build put things together um one time they made um brush spots it was made out of toothbrush and they put a little device on it that makes them walk across the table so it's pretty cool oh wow yeah I'm not sure exactly what she has planned for this month but I'm sure it'll be neat for the kids can I ask you a question real quick sure what does stem based activity mean? stem is science technology technology engineering and math so it's you know putting those principles of those different um, areas together and, and coming up and making something creating something mm-hmm. okay you make a toothbrush walk That's yeah cool. <laughs> Um, then, um, on March the 26th, which is the last Tuesday of the month, she always does, um, craft noons on the last Tuesday of the month, and that starts at four, and so the kids just come in and make a craft. And then, of course, every Tuesday at 10 o'clock, she has story hour, and they come in, and the kids, um, below school age, um, they come in and she reads a book, and they usually sing songs, make crafts, um. So they have a good time with that, too. So those are our um, kids' programs for March coming up this month. Um, As far as her teen programs go, of course, she has um, the Teen Advisory Board that meets the first Wednesday of every month to kind of help her plan um, some of these activities, what she meets with the teens to see what they would like to do. Um, And so that's um, the first Wednesday of every month at 3.30. So I guess that will be tomorrow. So, And then on uh, March the 28th, she's going to have a paint party for the teens. She does these every so often. They come in and paint a canvas. So um, that will be March the 28th. Those are her teen programs for March. And then the adult programs that I have going, got going on, um, we've been having game night once a month. So... Um, that for March will be on March 25th, and it starts at 6. We just do, like, um, have tabletop games, board games. Um, we have a good game of dominoes, the Mexican train dominoes game that we have um, a group of us play every month. Um, then on March 14th, we'll have craft night. And um, one of my staff members, Kathy Gray, she does a really great job of putting craft night together for us every month. So you can come and you pay $5 just for the materials, and then um, you get to make a craft and take home. So that's also at 6 on uh, March 14th. And then coming up this week, we're really excited, is our next uh, Chautauqua speaker coming from the Kentucky Humanities Council. And Chautauqua, that's where a person portrays a character historical character famous character from kentucky person individual i say characters um a real person but they portray that person um and that's going to be aunt molly jackson and um that's this thursday at 6 6 p.m so all right that's a lot of stuff going on (laughs) 
Yes. Oh, I did forget to mention that, um, which I think probably Joni Phelps from the Extension Office, she's probably been on here some and talking about her recipe review, but she brings that to the library every month too. And so she'll be there um, in March on the 26th for her recipe review. I haven't actually heard her talk about a recipe review. Um, she does. There's this calendar that um, the University of Kentucky, the Extension Offices put out and um, they have a recipe each month for the, in the calendar, and so she will make that recipe and brings it in and lets um, the public taste it and see how they like it. And it's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> she, she has talked about, um, you know, she's told me about a calendar with recipes mm-hmm. and that she does, that she mm-hmm. goes the library and mm-hmm. does a, a whole review on it mm-hmm. with samples mm-hmm. with samples. Yes. samples well i mean how, how else can you review right yeah. right <laughs> you have to okay. share mm-hmm. if you're going to talk about it last month was really good it was um a pasta and um some of them i'm a picky eater so some of them i'm like joni i don't think i'm gonna try <laughs> but last month i did it was good so. okay uh, do you mind if i see your thing for just a moment sure okay i have questions but we got so many <laughs> things on here did did you have something Kathy that you needed to say I see you've got some stuff in front of you oh I just tagged along because I'm president <laughs> of friends of the library and okay. this year this year we are celebrating our 25th anniversary of serving the library as friends and since it's a new year we are starting a membership drive we are in a membership drive mm-hmm. already And so we are having a meeting next Wednesday, March the 12th at 10 o'clock in the library. And I welcome anyone who wants to join to come to the meeting. You can pick up uh, an application for membership there at the library. Or if you're not able to be a member uh, for whatever reason, but you want to donate, you can certainly do that through friends. We have a lot of activities. Some of our friends are unable to attend meetings, but they like to help with the activities. And some friends are just unable to do either, but they want to support the library and they become friends uh, helping through their membership dues and whenever they can with donations. How did the friend, now I've I've heard of these organizations, friends of the um, whatever, whatever library, in this case, we're the George Coon Public Library. How did that get started? Do you have any idea? Well, 25 years ago, I can tell you how it got started. Uh, At that time, the light, the director of the library was Judy Bowes, and she put an ad in the paper because she needed some volunteers to help uh, with events she was trying to have. And thus Friends was born, and here we are 25 years later. We're volunteers. Everybody's a volunteer. All the money we make and our fundraising goes back into uh, whatever the library would want. These are, We do more. We would do wants. We don't part of their budget. So... Um, if there are things that the library wouldn't be able to have otherwise or upgrade some of the things with our monies, well, then we do that. For example, um, we just, this past Friday, we had, um, we celebrated Dr. Seuss's birthday and had a movie night at the library. We showed Horton Hears a Who, but um, we... I love that movie. (laughs) We, the friends just purchased a, for the library, an inflatable screen um, so that we can we can use it inside or outside and then a sound system to go with it to have these movie nights so that's something Ooh, the friends that's did pretty for us. awesome mm-hmm. so you'll be able to to do like a <coughs> drive-in type feel and mm-hmm. when you know it's not 12 degrees outside right, right correct <laughs> right absolutely <laughs> unless you're Shane Bogle from the extension <laughs> office who loves this kind of weather but anyway mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's cool. That's awesome. I I don't think I've ever seen an inflatable screen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that would be really cool to, you know. It's very impressive. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Have like a little picnic Mm -hmm. and, oh, how fun. Okay. So I see this hot cocoa club come up all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. When's, is that, that's obviously not going to be a year round thing. No, it's just for the winter. Um, She, correct. She, um, usually does it the months that the kids are in school um, and because they're in the summer we do summer reading and so we have activities going um, throughout the summer for that so that's something she kind of does um, through the school year so that the kids have something to come and do. Mm-hmm. So when we skip spring and go straight to summer are you going to switch over to lemonade? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what she did last year yes she switched over to, to lemonade or something like that yes. Awesome okay. All right, and then we've got craft noons, we've got maker's break, the spring break activities. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is, what is this, what's the purpose of that? Um, 
I believe it was a couple years ago that we started this having the spring break activities because there's a lot of kids, um, families that do not go out of town for spring break. And so um, it just gives them something, the kids to do and come and, you know, have fun, but still have some educational value to it. And, you know, those stay, stay vacation instead of going away somewhere they can have some activities. Just to keep them occupied mm-hmm. during the, the break. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. I have one more question and then I'll let y'all go. But the the paint party that's coming up, um, or For you had teams. mentioned, yeah, mm-hmm. you had mentioned that, you know, this is not the first time they, Correct. they do. Mm-hmm. Have you seen any like talent? Like, oh, yes. Real, like, oh, yes. I mean, I mean, I don't mean that, you know, <clears throat> I mean, there's some like I want to paint, mm-hmm. but I can't make a stick person. <laughs> right. But I might sit there and try. <laughs> no, there is a lot of talent and um a lot of talent that we see we have some artwork hanging in the library from um the art department at the high school um miss bartolotti that teaches the art at the high school she has been gracious to um give me some of the canvases that the kids have painted over the years and um we kind of wrote try to rotate those but then you know yes in in our activities as well um they're interested and they're very talented and it's it's neat to see the things that they come up with so yeah I mean I'd, I'd go just for the fun of hanging out you know but I'd just be drawing the sun <laughs> and, and a little wave and you know me too me too because <laughs> that's all I can get out <laughs> mm-hmm. all right ladies what else you want to tell us about um there's a couple of things that I would like to mention just to get people to start thinking about um the first is we're going to be having our quilt show coming up in um april and so we are asking that anybody in the community that has quilts that they would like to display to go in it go ahead and start bringing those in so we can start getting them hung or placed and um, we usually do that through the month of april to coincide with the quilt show that they have in paducah So if you have quilts and would like to display those, get those on in. We're taking them now, anytime. So just drop them by the library. And then also to kind of piggyback um, what Kathy was saying about their anniversary, the Friends are celebrating their 25th anniversary, but the library is celebrating a couple of anniversaries this year. The old part of the library is going to be 90 this year. 90 Jeez. years old. Mm-hmm. And then the new edition is going to be 50 years old. Wow. So we are going to be doing things throughout the year to kind of celebrate um, those milestones. But um, the um, thing coming up first is in April, uh, April 11th, we're going to have an open house at the library from 10 to 4. Just people can drop by and we're going to try to have some pictures of the progression of the library up so pe- for people to look at and then just maybe some different artifacts and articles about the library over the years. And then if anybody has anything that they think would be cool to share with us, um, I mentioned to Jared he came and did a story and I mentioned to him that um you know it'd be cool to see if somebody still had like an old library car- their old library card you know we could bring it in and show and stuff like that so if anybody has anything like that they would like to share that would be great too um but we're we want to celebrate we're proud that the library is still thriving and that we can provide um not only books and resources like that but activities and um programs for people to come to and attend and just be a vital part of the community at the library absolutely i love that we can call 50 years new (laughs) (laughs) it makes me feel a little better (laughs) all right ladies so bring your quilt items bring your memorabilia (laughs) in you know to the library and Mm -hmm. let's let's get in now and i've like i said i've not I've seen a lot of what goes on at that library, and it's just amazing all the activities that you have and, you know, provide. So there's no want for something to do. You know, if you don't, if you can't find something to do, you're not looking. Right. (laughs) Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. All right. 1580, 103.3 WPKY. We're listening to Coffee Talk. Tired of sucking on cough drops all day for your sore throat, but not finding the right relief? That's because cough drops don't numb pain. Yeah, the truth hurts, but you're not a sucker. Try Sepacol. It's different. Just one Sepacol Instamax lozenge has two max strength pain relievers and cools in seconds. 
It's the numbing relief you need to knock out sore throat fast. Find it at Walmart or your nearest retailer when sore throat strikes, and this time, strike back. Sepacol. Feel the difference. Liberty Mutual Insurance knows you're focusing on the road right now, so we'll just describe our newspaper print ad to you. It's a tiny square that's colored a newspaper shade of gray that has you thinking yellow. As the words read, Liberty Mutual customizes your insurance so you only pay for what you need. Now that's the kind of print ad that'll make you glad you still read newspapers. Go to LibertyMutual.com for a customized quote and you could save. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. 